Hi there, I've been on YouTube for quite a while now and because uh, I had uh, things to do and work and not what but I've uh, been doing a usual little bit of tinkering around and I've just posted a video, a very short video earlier on of a high voltage Cockcroft Walton multiplier which I've made uh, a few weeks ago. This is basically, if the camera will focus, it's basically a 63mm PVC tube and electrode, two inputs and it contains, uh, it's a 10 stage multiplier, so it's got uh, 20 polystyrene, uh, 30 kV, 1000 picofarad capacitors, and I think it's got, what diodes did I use? Yeah, they were 30 kV rated as well, and they're 100 milliamp, and the whole thing's filled with mineral oil. I went for polystyrene capacitors because the ceramic ones, even though they're <clears throat> smaller and more compact, but they don't they seem to fail more often I found so this is this has worked okay. The drive circuit right, let's show this to you. <clears throat> the drive circuit I tried using a ZVS driver or ZVS driver, whichever way you prefer to pronounce it. And the trouble was it I could get some hefty sparks from the uh, Flavic transformer, you know, they're quite powerful. But I could I could never get the frequency to match the uh, to match the Cockcroft Walton multiplier. And in the past, I've used like a, a MOSFET and a five 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 timer to drive a flyback transformer. And you could adjust the frequency of the timer, and you can you can put a lot more energy in. So I found that you could get a heck of a lot more voltage out of the Cockcroft Walton multiplier. So I thought. Rather than going back to using a 555 timer based circuit, a few years ago I built a, a DIY power inverter, a bit of a novelty thing, which uses the CD4047IC. And it has three outputs, two of them are flip flop basically, when the one's high, the other's low, and they flip round, and they, this drives two MOSFETs. And then you, you use a centre tapped uh, line frequency transformer, 50 or 60 hertz, to get your uh, mains voltage output, whichever voltage or country you're in, uh, 120 for North America, 240 for Europe, UK, etc. And I thought, well, well, if I alter the timing capacitor, which is here, and the resistor, I can make these work at higher frequencies. And yeah, I tried it. So I, this, I built this board quite a few years ago. It's got a 15 volt zener diode and a resistor because the chip's maximum voltage is 20 volts I believe. And I set this to work between uh, 5 and 30 kilohertz. And then it uses, uh, uses the two output, the two inverting outputs to drive the gates. Now these aren't MOSFETs, these are RGBTs because the MOSFETs I was using were getting too hot, especially on the power supply I'm, I'm using, which is a 24 volt power supply. It's set to about 28 volts at the moment. And the bizarre thing is, if you Google CD4047, uh, it will always show you the, the similar circuit board, the, sorry, similar circuit diagram to this. But it's always been used to drive a line frequency transformer for a DIY inverter. And I could not find anybody else that used this same circuit to drive two MOSFETs or RGBTs to power a flyback transformer. No one's done it. Or, no one's done it and put anything online about it. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And uh, I wired it up and I was, I was using IRFP 260s. They were getting too hot. So I, I switched to some uh, IGBTs. I can't remember the number of them, but they're rated, I can't even read the number on them. They're rated at uh, uh, 600 volts, 53 amp continuous drain current at about 20 degrees Celsius. So I swapped it for them and the circuit works and it's running off the, I'll show you the transformer, the, sorry the power supply if I move the camera over here, it's just a box and the cheap Chinese uh, power supply, it's raised at 360 watts, the circuit pulls around about 10 amps under full load and the RGBTs, they get moder mod moderately warm but they don't get that hot, you know, they're, they're baking and which you don't want. So I'll do a quick demonstration, I'll draw some arcs off the case, obviously the uh, the return earth lead of the flyback transformer is connected to the mains earth which is grounded to the uh, case of the uh, power supply. So if I move the camera up again, and I'll switch the power on. Now I can actually change the, frequent, change the resonant frequency of the uh, driving circuit and actually I can actually get a much bigger spark. 
But what it's set to now drives the Cockcroft Multi Multiplier perfectly. It, it, it's, it, it's, well, judging by the arc line from around about 300 kilovolts. Now in theory, the diodes, because there's, there's uh, 20 diodes at 30 kilovolts, it could in theory go up to around 600 kilovolts, but I'm not gonna push it that hard because if, the, if something does blow inside it, I'll have to cut it all open and drain all the oil out, so I'd rather not uh, push it too hard. Plus I don't wanna kill myself as well. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, put your thoughts in the comments about this, this setup. I mean, I'm not going to bother drawing a circuit diagram because all you've got to do is Google uh, CD4047 inverter circuit. That's the circuit. And you just change the, uh, uh, like I said, the resistor and timing capacitor and you can operate it at any frequency and drive some IGBTs, drive a flyback transformer. This one was taken from an ozone generator. And it's quite actually quite powerful, quite beefy, quite chunky probably handle much more power than what I could put into it here but uh, yeah I'm surprised that no one's ever used this circuit to drive a, a flyback inverter circuit before they all always seem to be the uh, line frequency transformers and I'm thinking well why has no one done it and it works now obviously a ZVS driver or ZVS driver is much simpler in fact you don't even need to build them these days you just you just buy one off, off eBay from China and they're, they're a few quid or a few dollars they're not 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 expensive but like I said, I tried using a, a ZVS driver and there was just sparks coming out, even when it was turned up quite high power, the sparks coming out the end of the tube, it was, they were only like about 60 kV sparks, probably about that long, I'm thinking, well, what's going on here? But with this, I can tune the frequency of this uh, circuit to match the imp impedance of the capacitors and it, I can just put massive amounts of power through it. Also, it's a square wave. Uh, obviously, uh, ZVS drivers, they are sine wave and Cockcroft multipliers pass more energy through them with a square wave. Of course, this is a square wave circuit. Square waves are disadvantaged because there's a lot of harmonics. Obviously, because it's, it's a sharp turn on, a sharp turn off. That's probably why my uh, MOSFETs were overheating, but uh, these IGBTs, they can handle it. But uh, I don't know if there's really anything else to say. Uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. I'll see you next time.